It feels like the process that perplexity is doing, we ask a question, you answer it, and then you go on to the next related question mm -hmm. and this chain of questions. Mm -hmm. That feels like that could be instilled into AI, just constantly searching. So you, it, you are the space. one who made the decision on like- The initial spark for the fire, yeah. And you don't even need to ask the exact question we suggested. It's more a guidance for you. You could ask anything else. And if AIs can go and explore the world and ask their own questions, come back and like come up with their own great answers, it almost feels like you got a whole GPU server that's just like, hey, you give the task, you know, just just do go and explore uh, drug drug design, like figure out how to take Alpha Fold three and make a drug that cures cancer, and come back to me once you find something amazing. And then it, you pay like say ten million dollars for that job, mm -hmm. but then the answer came up, came back with you. It's like completely new way to do things. And what is the value of that one particular answer? That would be insane if yeah. it if it worked. So that's the sort of world that I think we don't need to really worry about AIs going rogue and taking over the world. But it's less about access to a model's weights; it's more access to compute that is. Uh, you know, pu putting the world in like more concentration of power in few individuals because not everyone's going to be able to afford this much amount of compute to answer the hardest questions. So it's this incredible power that comes with an AGI type system. The concern is who controls the compute on which the AGI runs. Correct. And, yeah. Or rather, who's even able to afford it? Because like controlling the compute might just be like cloud provider or something, but um, who's able to spin up a job that just goes and says, hey, go do this research and come back to me and give me a great answer. So to you, AGI in part is compute limited versus data limited. Inference versus... compute. Inference compute. Yeah, it's not much about, I, th I think like at some point, it's less about the pre-training or post-training once you crack this sort of iterative iterative compute of the same weights, <laughs> right? It's going to be the so like it's nature versus nurture. Once you crack the nature part, yeah, which is like the pre-training, it's it's all going to be the the uh, the rapid iterative thinking that the right. AI system is doing and that needs compute. Yeah. we're calling it inference. It's fluid intelligence, right? Mm -hmm. The facts, research papers, existing facts about the world. Ability to take that, verify what is correct and right, ask the right questions, and do it in a chain, and do it for a long time. Not even talking about systems that come back to you after an hour, like a week, right, or a month. You you would pay like imagine if someone came and gave you a transformer like paper. You go like let's say you're in 2016, mm -hmm. and you asked uh, an AI, an AGI. Uh, hey, I want to make everything a lot more efficient. I want to be able to use the same amount of compute today, but end up with a model 100x better. Mm -hmm. And then the answer ended up being transformer. But instead it was done by an AI instead of Google brain researchers, <laughs> right? Now, now, what is the value of that? The value of that is like trillion dollars, technically yeah. speaking. So would you be willing to pay uh, $100 million for that one job? Yes. But how many people can afford $100 million for one job? Very few some high net worth individuals and some really well capitalized companies. And nations, if it turns to that. Correct. Where nations take nations, control. Yeah. So that is where we need to be clear about, like, the regulation is not on the, mo like that, that's where I think the ho whole conversation around like, you know, oh, the weights are dangerous or like, oh, that, that's all like really uh, flawed. And it's more about like, application and who has access to all this.